Let me pose this question the way I think people at home would love to pose it. What the heck is going on up there? I think we have maximum capacity passenger loads and we have minimum flight attendant staffing and people are crammed into smaller spaces and um, people are stressed. They're stressed from the time that you get in your car, face traffic to going through TSA and then when you finally get on that plane and you're gonna go for three hours with nothing, this is where it gets released a lot of times. Raise your hand if you feel tension in the skies in planes when you're on board planes right now. Raise your hand if you feel it. Oh, I experience it yeah. every trip at least once. Every trip at least once. Yeah. What's the worst thing you've seen on a plane in terms of people behaving badly? Well, I had a passenger. Um, the laboratory was occupied and he did not want to wait and he urinated right in front of the bathroom uh, by the cockpit. And that's pretty, pretty much unacceptable. And <laughs> that's not pretty much unacceptable. <laughs> that's unacceptable. Yeah, and how do you handle yeah. it? Yeah, well, obviously I had to report that to the, the captain. Raise your hand if you've been verbally abused by a passenger. Really? Yes. In what way, Tim? I really think alcohol does play into this a lot. Uh, the same alcohol that you're drinking on the ground is very different when the cabin is closed and you're at 8,000 feet. It affects you differently. And most people don't recognize how alcohol does affect them. They get drunker. They get drunker. Faster. Faster. Would you guys like to see them stop serving alcohol on flights? No, no, I, I think that's a bit extreme. We're specifically trained to assess the situation and we use specific parameters. If someone is appearing to be intoxicated, we may not serve them a full drink. So what percentage of incidents that occur on a plane do you think have some basis in alcohol consumption? I think that's the leading. Probably at least 80%. 80%. Yeah. I want to show you guys a couple of pieces of video, all right? I want to play them for you, and I want you to tell me what your immediate reaction was the first time you saw this video, okay? There you go. Hey, you oh, this is busted his lip. Oh, my God! Look at what you did to him! So that video went viral worldwide. The first time you saw it, what'd you think? I was shocked. Shocked? Why? It shouldn't have happened, it shouldn't have gone that far. It's unacceptable and I think the industry has learned from that. You know that the people around the world who watched that video said, that's proof. Mm -hmm. These guys don't get it. They, they don't understand the flying public. They're bad guys. And how did that feel to know that that's what people were thinking? It's kind of disheartening because you know, we're there as first responders, we're there for your safety. You know, that's our job is to help and be there for our passengers. This is a fist fight on board a flight that was boarded. Someone help! This guy's crazy! First time you saw that video, Dante, what'd you think? The flight attendant you see in the video, uh, she uh, stepped right in to try to de escalate the situation and she enlisted the help of another passenger. So I, I think that what it is we do as flight crew. Um, handle a situation like that, it was handled perfectly. What are three things that the flying public could do starting today that would make this situation better? Approach your flight with a sense of community. You're going to be part of this for however many hours. Just know that when you're delayed, I'm delayed. Mm -hmm. and when you're canceled, I'm canceled. And say hello to your flight crew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't treat the flight crew like we're the enemy because we are all in this together. Your number one pet peeve. Mine? <laughs> People who put their feet up on the seat in front of them or on the wall. What's yours? I'm sitting in a jump seat. Generally, it's right beside the bathroom. So if you'll just twist and pull, the door will open and close that way. You don't have to slam it because my ear is right there. <laughs> I figure I would always end on a little bit of humor. <laughs> One of the things they all said is that we, on shows like this, never talk about the 999 flights out of 1,000 that go off without a hitch. We only cover the stories where there's a problem, and, or the flights where there's a problem. And they work so hard. I mean, they are on the front lines. I think it's a good point. You know what? They're delayed, too, when we're all delayed. Nobody's happy about it. And they're there for your safety. They aren't waiters and waitresses. Yeah, they want you to know that. Good conversation.